the Akira class entered Starfleet service in the later half of the 24th century and was built in response to the urgent threats posed by both the Cardassian Wars and the Borg. While exploration remained important to Starfleet, Federation space had become potentially much more dangerous and the fleet had to be equipped to meet these darker times. As such, the Akira class was designed much more for patrol and combat duties. Unlike many other Star Trek ships, Starfleet ships, sorry, that featured a secondary engineering hull, the Akira class comprised of a single primary saucer section, on top of which was built a catamaran style hull. These beams extended back beyond past the rear of the saucers to a spar, upon the top of which a weapons pod was mounted, while the warp nacelles hung down below on either side. Despite the lack of a secondary engineering hull, the Akira class was still 464 metres long, meaning that the saucer section was of a similar size to the saucer section on the Enterprise E. This meant the Akira class presented a much narrower profile, and thus less of a target. In combat, while the absence of a dedicated engineering hull did nothing to diminish the speed of the ship, which was capable of reaching a top speed of warp 9.8. One of the main features of the Akira class was the weapons pod that was situated on top of the boom that connected the two warp nacelles. This pod featured an incredible array of weaponry, including seven forward facing torpedo launchers with a row of four positioned directly above a row of three. The middle two launchers and the top row were for four more advanced quantum torpedoes, while the rest were for photon torpedoes. The weapons pod also featured a further six launchers towards the rear with three on each side, providing comprehensive defensive coverage to the aft of the ship. In addition, the pod was equipped with tactical sensors and for more exploration and research orientated missions could be converted to carry more specialized science sensor equipment. One of the reasons why the Akira class was so heavily defended was that it had acted as a carrier, housing a large number of shuttlecraft. It was designed with a fly-through shuttle bay so that multiple auxiliary craft could be launched simultaneously through the three doors that sat side by side in the notch at the front of the saucer. There, I'm assuming. The shuttles could then return to the ship in quick succession through doors at the rear of the saucer behind the bridge. There. The ability to quickly more launch and dock shuttles was a major advantage in a combat situation where smaller, more manoeuvrable fighter-type craft proved vital. This was particularly true during the Cardassian Wars, as Starfleet had to respond quickly to Cardassian incursions into disputed territories. They were also very effective in pursuing the ships of the Renegade Marquee organization, which often hid in the battlelands where larger ships 
were more adversely affected by intense plasma storms and gravitation anomalies. The fact that the Akira class carried so many shuttles also made it an excellent rescue ship for evacuation efforts. <laughs> this was particularly useful in areas where transporters did not work, as the shuttles could, not, could be rapidly deployed to pick up survivors or vulnerable, vulnerable colonists. Return quickly to this ship and then be launched again. Defensive shield emitters were positioned on either side of the launch bay doors, while the free shuttle doors provided a safe and calm entry point as they were protected by being tucked down within the catamaran split hull. The main bridge too was afforded extra protection by the raised spill split hull, as it was nestled between these structures and not exposed on top of the source section as the bridge was on most other Starfleet ships. Overall, the Akira class proved very effective during the Cardassian Wars performing patrol and protection missions among out of the duration territories, helping to defend vulnerable colonies, its formidable array of weaponry and ability to rapidly deploy multiple star shuttlecraft, proved invaluable in safeguarding Federation outposts, and carrying out em emergency evacuations. Akira class vessels, including the USS Thunderchild, were also part of the fleet that engaged the Borg in the Battle of Sector 001 in 2373, and they played a significant role in several conflicts during the Dominion War. In 2378, an emergency defensive force of 27 vessels, including several Akira class, were hastily assembled to intercept the Borg when a transport came through it was detected over no less than light year from Earth. As it turned out, the Borg suit that emerged from the conduit was destroyed from within by the USS Voyager and the fleet merely had to escort her home. 